picture? Did you hear the music? <laughs> oh my god! Holy shit! Look at all the fucking people! Well, hello everybody out there in Atlanta, it's ChrisMajorsLuckies.com with another exciting episode of Topher's Log, and today is, of course, a very special episode of Topher's Log. I said I was going to do one last week, and here we are. And it all starts with the shirt I'm wearing, because what we're going to do is we're going to go back and we're going to recount my first experience in Halloween Horror Nights, which was kind of a disaster, so much so that I actually vowed never to come back. But anyway, so yeah, so the shirt that I'm wearing is actually the same exact shirt that I wore my first year with Halloween Horror Nights or for Halloween Horror Nights was the year 2000. Yes, the first year of Jack the Clown uh, and of course the whole icon era, things like that. But the first year I learned a couple of very important lessons that I will, that I still even to this day follow uh, when I visit Halloween Horror Nights. But a little bit of context here, way back in the year 2000, I was living in South Florida. We moved as a family to, to Florida, to South Florida specifically, uh, in 1996. We had, uh, actually, we, we had made plans to visit Halloween Horror Nights in 1998, uh, but plans, uh, they kind of uh, fell through and uh, we weren't able to go, so we had to wait a couple years, um, and we went in the year 2000. And uh, this particular trip was actually um, the idea was that it was, a, it was, it was like a, it was, it was supposed to be a big trip because uh, I graduated high school in the year 2000. Uh, we actually, we, we come up to Orlando, uh, quite a few times that year, but, uh, this particular trip was supposed to be the big one. Ah, uh, finally Halloween Horror Nights. Uh, so yeah, so we actually drove, uh, you know, from South Florida all the way up to, uh, Orlando and I learned my first lesson, which was we went to the parks that day. <laughs> we actually spent the day. Uh, mostly in Islands of Metro. We spent all day at Iowa um, and then uh, went to Halloween Horror Nights. We actually got into the park around a half an hour or so after the, the gates had officially opened. Um, and uh, yeah, so spending spending the entire day at the parks, doing Halloween Horror Nights, and then driving back uh, to South Florida uh, at like 2 o'clock in the morning. Not a good idea. Uh, also, uh, uh, not, uh, not just a good idea, but uh, kind of dangerous in a way too, you know, being up all that time and then uh, driving all the way back to South Florida very late at night. Yeah, not not a very good idea. Uh, never did that again. <laughs> but never if we if we drove up uh, the the next uh, the next year when we came back, we actually um, did not go to the parks. We we just we drove we drove up, did Halloween Horror Nights, um, you know, and then stayed in a hotel overnight and then drove back in the morning. Uh, but uh, but yeah, so we didn't we didn't we didn't do that. Um, uh, never did that again. Uh, but uh, the other thing that we kind of ran into the first year was, you might have heard it in the cold open, uh, were the crowds. And uh, I actually have, have never since um, seen Horror Nights, uh, I mean, obviously it's been packed, uh, but for some reason, uh, everybody was kind of crunched into Production Central. Like, you could not move. Like when, when uh, it's 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 kind of hard to see on the video. But when we when we were walking into the gates, uh, just looking under the archway, looking through the archway where the fence is, looking past the fence, straight down Production Central, all you saw were it was just a a sea of bobbing heads, just nothing but life, <laughs> just sort of uh, hurting their way down Production Central. Uh, it was, it was, it was kind of jarring. I mean, I had never seen anything like that before. Was, all those people once, I'd never seen anything like that before in my entire life. Uh, and, and we were like, damn, uh, I mean, cause obviously this was the only night that we were going to be there. Uh, you know, tickets even back then, you know, they're cheaper, uh, cheaper, uh, than they are now, obviously, but it was still pretty expensive back then. Uh, you know, it was just, it was crazy. I mean, you, you saw those crowds you're like, well, I guess we're not doing anything, <laughs> you know, we're not gonna be able to do anything in this place. Um, we, we ran into uh, a problem pretty much right off the bat, which was at the time, 
uh, we bought our tickets through Ticketmaster uh, down, uh, uh, you know, in um, um, uh, um, FYE at the time, but it was Camelot Music at the time. Uh, Spencer's also sold tickets, uh, also had a Ticketmaster. They also sold tickets, but in this case, we bought ours at uh, FYE uh, or Camelot Music, as it were. They used to warn you not to get the tickets wet or not to expose the tickets to direct sunlight because if you did, your tickets would actually turn black. And our tickets, because we were at Allen's Adventure uh, all day, we did do, I believe we did Popeye, uh, and our tickets got wet and our tickets turned black. So we actually had some trouble getting into the turnstiles. Uh, they almost did not let us into the, uh, into the event because our tickets were black. <laughs> so we had some trouble there. <laughs> um, so yeah, so that was an issue, but nevertheless, we did actually manage to get into the gates um, and we, we, we were so overwhelmed by the amount of, the, the, the sheer amount of life <laughs> that was just shimmering down Production Central. Uh, it took us a while to sort of traverse that entire roadway. Uh, I remember there was a, you might see it in the video if I pop it up up here. Future Chris put up the video here. But down Production Central there was like music blaring and there was a DJ and it was just noise and chaos and lights. Uh, and you know, with all the people. Um, which is another lesson that I learned, uh, it, because it was crowded. Uh, we went the Saturday before Halloween. Uh, the weekend before Halloween, uh, for a long time, it's sort of, it still kind of is, but these days the crowds and the levels of crowds and, uh, you know, the, um, uh, the sort of pattern is a little bit different today than it was back then. But, but generally, the weekend before Halloween, if, if uh, you know, if Halloween fell during the week, the weekend was always the most crowded, and we went the Saturday, October 28th, 2000, the Saturday before uh, Halloween. And it was, like I said, just complete chaos in terms of the crowds. I'd, I'd never seen anything like it. The first two houses up at the front, which were Total Chaos and Anxiety, I think is the other one, uh, both of those houses right off the bat were like four hours. The wait times were, I think Total Chaos was like three hours and 25 minutes. Um, and anxiety was something like three hours or something like 250. So, so somewhere, somewhere in those, in, in that, in that, in that range. Uh, so we quickly realized that we weren't going to do those houses, <laughs> but, uh, the biggest house that year or the one that, uh, everyone sort of talked about, uh, was Dark Torment. So we knew that if we were going to wait for a house that year, we were going to go wait for Dark Torment. Dark Torment was kind of a, kind of a hybrid of a haunted attraction, uh, and an actual, uh, haunted house where you would like get on, uh, earthquake and then the the maze would be like sort of the aftermath of the earthquake attraction uh, So we knew that we had to do that. So if we were gonna wait for a house that was one that we we're gonna wait for uh, But again first visit to Halloween Horror Nights Crowded as shit didn't really know how to navigate or traverse the field So we just kind of did we're like all right go this way and then just sort of make our way around So we the the only we actually only did two houses that or houses that year we did one house and one haunted attraction. So the first thing that we came to uh, was Nightmare Creatures 2, which was, uh, we got to, we, we walked through the Kong, uh, um, uh, the Kong cityscape, which was, um, I remember there was foam, uh, and it was, there was like scare actors around, but it was more like, it felt more like a scare zone to me uh, than an actual house. Um, I can't remember if we actually did the ride and then got off and then did all that stuff underneath. Um, I just remember walking through the city, the cityscape of confrontation, having scare actors, um, amongst the buildings. Then there was foam. I remember foam. Uh, there was foam at the end or something like that. But yeah, so we actually did that. The wait time on that wasn't that bad. It was like a 25 minute wait. Um, and then we, when we got out of there, again, you'll probably see in the video, we saw the tail end of, uh, the, the parade. Uh, the parade came around. So yeah, so then we kept walking and then we reached uh, the only house that we would actually do. Uh, and that was Universal's classic Monster Mania, uh, which was over, I believe it was over uh, in the uh, disaster queue, the overflow disaster queue. I don't have my website in front of me, so I can't remember exactly where the location was, but I'm pretty sure it was over in that area. And that, that wait time was about like a 45 minute wait. Uh, so we go and we, we did the house. Um, and uh, pretty much halfway through, by the time uh, we were about halfway through the house, all of a sudden, all the house lights on the maze uh, inside the house came up. And uh, we had a couple of staff members sort of rush into us. 
um, and then they started ushering us out of the house. Then <laughs> they just, uh, it, was just, it was just like this mass evacuation of people um, out of the house. Um, and I can only assume that there was some kind of, a, you know, some kind of, um, uh, you know, uh, some kind of an incident in there. Uh, we all know that stuff like that does happen. Uh, but that was the first and only time that I've ever been inside of a house and physically were, you know, was involved in some kind of an evacuation because of an incident. I've never actually had that happen to me since then. You know, of course, you know, you hear of all that stuff all the time, but that was the first time I'd actually been privy to it. Um, so yeah, so we had, we had that happen. And then after that, we were like, well, fuck it. Because Dark Torment was like a four hour wait. Uh, we were going to go do Bill and Ted, but we decided to wait on Bill and Ted because... I mentioned earlier that we had gone, uh, we actually went up to Orlando a couple times that year. Uh, w one of which was in spring break of that year when we were there on the day of the opening of Men in Black. Um, we didn't get a chance to do the Men in Black attraction because again, the wait time was ridiculous. So we actually decided that we were gonna go wait in line for Men in Black because the wait time when we got in line <laughs> was only a 45 minute wait. So we were like, okay, well we can finally experience Men in Black, because we didn't get a chance to do it on opening day. But we were there opening day, we just didn't get a chance to do it on opening day. So we decided to get in line and wait for Men in Black. 45 minutes in line turned into one hour. One hour in line turned into an hour and 20 minutes. An hour and 20 minutes turned into an hour and 45 minutes. An hour and 45 minutes turned into two hours. <laughs> and then two hours turned into two and a half hours. We waited almost, it was closer to two hours and 45 minutes. We waited about two hours and 45 minutes for Men in Black. <laughs> so we, wait, we literally, we wasted, which you, there's a, you probably see that in the video over here as well, the aftermath of that. Uh, we wasted a lot of time. And actually to this day, it's another rule that I, 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 I kind of abide by, unless I'm at the event with people who are not, uh, they don't go to Universal, they're, this might be their one and only Universal vacation and they're there for both Universal and Halloween Horror Nights. I don't do rides. I don't do rides at all during Halloween Horror Nights. When I'm at Halloween Horror Nights, I'm strictly there for the event and nothing else. I don't bother with rides. Like I said, unless uh, it's a special occasion, like somebody, uh, if I'm with people who are there, uh, you know, who are you know who are there on vacation, who might not get a chance to uh, to do an attraction that they're looking to do, maybe during the day or it's their only night. Or whatever that's the only time I will ever break my rule break my exception uh, to not doing rides during Halloween Horror Nights so by the time we had actually done all that stuff and uh, we got off Men in Black <laughs> two and a half hour away from Men in Black uh, the wait times for for everything uh, was still ridiculously long so we decided that we're gonna get something to eat and then uh, we actually did a complete you know walk around back at the park and then made our way uh, all the way back we actually stopped we saw Jack the Clown Jack the Clown came out um, it was weird. Uh, the, the, the opening part, the walking into uh, 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 Amity, uh, one of the boathouses there, he randomly came out uh, with a little spotlight uh, and like sort of interacted with the guests. Um, and then we walked through the, um, uh, the Dr. Morose, the midway of Dr. Morose uh, scare zone, which was uh, one of the craziest scare zones I'd ever walked through. Uh, and, 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 and I think that was the savior for me, walking through that scare zone. Uh, was was basically the best time that we had at the event. Uh, and looking back on it now uh, and sort of uh, reminiscing about that one moment, that's probably the moment uh, that sold me on Horror Nights moving forward, uh, even though we sort of swore it off. <laughs> you know, we said we'd never come back. But uh, but that that one moment, walking through that because you couldn't see anything, uh, the fog and the strobe lights and the noise and the scare actors, it was it was a communal experience too. Everyone around us walking through that scare zone, uh, you know, you you, uh, you just it was it, it was incredible. You couldn't see anything. It was it was it was brilliant. Um, and then we went. We did uh, we did Bill and Ted. Um, and then by that time, it was over. Uh, we we didn't get a chance to do Dark Torment. We tried to do it on the way out, but they had closed. Um, uh, we missed it by by this much. Uh, trying to walk out, uh, we walked out of um, uh, Bill and Ted walked by Dark, Tor uh, Dark Torment, um, and it was closed down. Uh, so we decided to leave. <laughs> we decided to leave, uh, and it was it was very much a disastrous uh, sort of first impression for Halloween Horror Nights for me. And we vowed 
never to come back. <laughs> it was such a horrible experience. We vowed never to come back. And I've come back every year since then. Uh, we came back the following year. Uh, but um, of course, the next year we, we actually did, uh, we, we went, it was a couple, it was, it was very closely tied to 9-11. Uh, we uh, we went like two weeks before, or excuse me, two weeks after 9/11, uh, two or three, somewhere in that in that time frame. So there, there was there was a lot of blur to that event for for 2001 because of that. Everyone was kind of in a fog. Uh, but we did come back, and I did come back every year since then. And I've of course become obsessed with the event, and everything is sort of history. Uh, but yeah, so again, kind of a disastrous first experience. The crowds, the 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 biggest thing for me was the crowd just seeing the sheer amount of, of 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 people humanity crammed into one little space um what i've never seen anything like it before and even and like i said since then i i have not seen anything like that um at, at halloween horror nights just uh, the amount of the amount of people amassed in one area it was it was mostly up at the front but um uh, in terms of the, the you know the crowds that walking w walking through crowds uh, but the rest of the crowds was just, it was all about um, the ha the wait times on the houses. Just um, complete, you know, just couldn't do anything. Three hours, four hours. Um, uh, like I said, uh, Dark Torment was like a three and a half hour wait. We, we, we did do those those two. But everything else was over like a three hour wait. Um, pretty much all the other houses were like all over three hour waits. We didn't really get, to, we didn't get a chance to walk through scare zones because we were kind of rushing around trying to get to places. Uh, so yeah, so I learned a lot of lessons that first year, uh, vowed never to come back. Uh, but of course I did, uh, and I, and I, and I, and I love the event, but, um, but yeah, so that's it. That's it for this special episode of Topher's Log. Uh, hope you all enjoyed that little, uh, going back down memory lane. Uh, we'll be back next week with, uh, with another Topher's Log. This week is going to be very interesting. Uh, keep, uh, keep your ears open there, uh, there, Twitterati and YouTubeverse. Uh, you never know what could happen. Uh, but keep your ears out. Uh, but until then, I will talk to you guys later.